Hello, it is your host Ashley with STM's Crime and Paranormal Podcast. Um, today we are going to be talking about a Franklin Delano Floyd. Franklin was born on June 17th of 1943 in Barnesville, Georgia. He was the youngest of five, born to a Thomas and Della Floyd. Shortly after Franklin turned one years old, his father died from kidney and liver failure from being an alcoholic. Della would struggle to make a living by herself and ended up giving up her children. So in 1946, Franklin and all of his siblings were placed in the care of Georgia Baptist Children's Home in Hatville, Georgia. This is where Floyd would be bullied by the other children in the home for being feminine. Later on, it was said that Franklin had been sodomized with a broomstick when he was only six years old. He was also gave terrible punishments from the staff. And when Floyd was a teenager, they would dip his hands into hot water after being caught masturbating. He would often get into trouble for fighting and stealing at this home also. So in 1959, the children's home he was in ended up giving custody to his sister, which her name was Dorothy. He was given up by the children's home after he had ran away and broke into a nearby home to steal food. So after being kicked out of his sister's home, Franklin would then travel to Indianapolis to try to search for his mother. Um, here he would find that she had became a prostitute and his mother and him would then forge legal documents so Franklin was able to go to California and enlist, and enlist in the U.S. Army. However, he was discharged after only six months once the army found out that he was underage and that his paperwork had been forged and falsified. So then Floyd would travel as a drifter. After his discharge from the army, he would then try to find his mother again, which he was unable to locate. So he ended up just traveling across the country. Franklin's mother died on July 2nd of 1968 and was buried in Graceland Cemetery in Chicago, Illinois. Um, Floyd had a early criminal history. So in February of 1960, February 19th in 1960, uh, Franklin was 16 years old. He broke into a Sears department store in Inglewood, California, and he stole a gun from there. So police would respond to the burglar alarm, which ended in a shootout, and Floyd was shot in the stomach needing emergency surgery. After he had recovered from being shot in the stomach and going through the surgery, he was then sent to a youth institution for a year. In 1961, he was then arrested again for violating his parole by going fishing in Canada with a friend. So he took a fishing trip to Canada with a friend and he was not supposed to leave. May of 1962, Franklin would return to Hatville and eventually find a job at the Atlanta International Airport. So a month later, Floyd would then abduct a four-year-old from a local bowling alley and then sexually assaulted her in the woods that was nearby. He was then convicted of kidnapping and child molestation, sentenced to serve 10 to 20 years in the Georgia State Prison located in Reedsville. November of 1962, he was then moved to Milledgeville State Hospital to undergo psychiatric testing. In 1963, while, while being taken out for a medical errand, Franklin escaped and fled to Macon. In Macon, he robbed over $6,000 from a Citizens and Southern National Bank. So he committed a bank robbery. He was then convicted of robbery and sentenced to the Federal Reformatory in Chillicothe, Ohio. Whew. Floyd would then try to escape again. So he was then transferred to the United States Penitentiary in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. When being locked up in the penitentiary, he was then raped by other inmates that had caused him to 
He, so after he was raped by other inmates, that would end up causing him to climb to a roof of the prison and threaten to commit suicide. He was then sent to the federal penitentiary, penitentiary in Marion, Illinois, but then was sent back to Georgia State Prison in 1968. So he jumped prisons a lot here. Um, this is where he would befriend a fellow inmate by the name of David Dial. In November of 1972, Franklin was released from prison and sent to a halfway house. January 27th of 1973, only a week after being released from this halfway house, Franklin would approach a woman at a gas station and force her into her car. After forcing her into his car, or into her car, he would then try to grope and sexually assault this woman. The woman was able to escape and Franklin was then arrested again. Floyd would then get in contact with his friend David Dial and convinced him to post his bond, being Dial had also been recently released from prison. Once his bond was posted, Floyd would then go on the run as a fugitive. He had then failed to show up to court on June 11th of 1973, so a warrant was issued for his arrest. So in 1974, Floyd would now, would now be using the alias Brandon Williams. He then met a woman named Sandy Chipman at a North Carolina truck stop. Sandy had four children from two different men, um, a child by the name of Suzanne, born in 1969 with her first husband. His name was Cliff Savakis. Then three other children with her second husband by the name of Dennis Brandenburg. Those three children were Allison, which was born in 1971, Amy, born in 1972, and Philip, nicknamed Stevie, born in 1974. Franklin and Sandy only dated for a month before they would get married. Floyd was able to convince Chipman to then move her family with him to Dallas, Texas. So in 1975, Sandy Chipman was arrested and sentenced to 30 days in jail for passing bad checks. While Sandy was serving her time in jail, she would leave her children in the care of Franklin Floyd. When Sandy arrived home after being released, she would find the home vacated with her children and her husband gone, vanished, poof, not to be seen or found. But eventually, she did find two of her daughters, Allison and Amy, at a local church-operated social services group. Sandy was never able to find her oldest child, Suzanne, or her youngest son, Philip. Philip's whereabouts were unknown until the year of 2019 when a man would come forward stating he believed he could be the missing boy. DNA tests would confirm this statement by confirming his identity as Philip. His older sister Allison would claim that their mother said that Philip was dead. So later Allison would learn from social services that Philip was alive and had been adopted privately in North Carolina shortly after he was born. So in 1989, Franklin Floyd would then have a second wife by the name of Tanya Don Hughes, whom would also go by the alias of Sharon Marshall. These are a lot of names to keep in order. Um, she had an infant son named Michael and was living in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where she was working as a dancer at a strip club. Karen Parsley, which was a fellow, a fellow dancer of Hughes, would try to get Tanya to leave Franklin Floyd, but Tanya would claim that if she left him, he would then kill her and her child if she had even tried. So Floyd would then join the Fraternal Order of Police, even though he was not a police officer, and would tell Tanya he could use his connections to track her down if she was ever to leave. So April of 1990, Tanya decided she was going to run away with a man named Kevin Brown, taking Michael with her. Brown was a college student that she has had a secret relationship with. Um, that same month, a passerby or a few passerbys would find Tanya lying on the side of a highway that was 100 miles outside of Oklahoma City. Hughes was then rushed to the Presbyterian Hospital in Oklahoma City with severe bruises and a large hematoma at the base of her skull. Sadly, Tanya did not make a recovery of her injuries and would later pass away five days later. 
When Hughes was found, she had groceries scattered all around her. Officers thought she may have been struck from behind in a hit and run while walking back from the store to a nearby Motel 6. Franklin Floyd would then arrive at this hospital the following day and claimed that he had fallen asleep at the motel after Tanya left to get groceries. So Tanya and Franklin would have several aliases that they would go by, which earlier I stated that there was a lot of names to keep track of. When Hughes passed away, her and Floyd were suspects in a 1989 disappearance of a former co-worker by the name of Cheryl Ann Camiso that was 18 years old. Um, this was a former co-worker of Tanya's, and I hope I said Camiso was her last name. I hope I said that right. Cheryl went missing after an angry confrontation with Floyd. So he was considered the main suspect in Cheryl's disappearance and in the death of his wife, Tanya. After Tanya died, Floyd put the two-year-old Michael into foster care and then left the state. When Michael was placed in foster care, his foster parents would go on to tell authorities that Michael had limited muscle control, was nonverbal, and would often have bouts of historical, hysterical behavior when he first arrived into the home. So later, he, Michael would make remarkable positive progress once he was in the home. So in 1994, Michael's foster parents would then begin the adoption process with him. Six months after Michael was placed in foster care, Franklin Floyd was arrested on a parole violation. When the adoption process was going on, part of the process was to compare Michael's and Franklin's DNA so they could determine paternity. However, it was found that DNA did not match and Floyd was not Michael's biological father. After Floyd was released from jail, he tried to get custody of Michael. But with his criminal record and the fact he was not biologically Michael's father, he was denied any kind of custody. So on September 12th of 1994, Michael was now in first grade at the Indian Meridian Elementary School in Choctaw, Oklahoma. Choctaw, Oklahoma, sorry. Franklin Floyd would walk right into Michael's school, forcing Principal James Davis at gunpoint to take him to Michael's classroom. He then forced Michael and Davis into his truck. Floyd stopped and forced Davis out of the truck in a wooded area, handcuffed him to a tree, and then sped off with Michael still in his truck. Principal Davis did survive this incident and he was later rescued. Two months later, Franklin was arrested in Louisville, Kentucky. Michael, however, was not with him when he was arrested and has not been seen since the abduction. Authorities would receive reports as to what had happened to Michael. Um, there were some statements from witnesses that would go into detail about Franklin allegedly confessing Michael's death. Floyd had supposedly told his sister and others that he had drowned Michael in the motel bathtub in Georgia after he had kidnapped him. Another person had claimed that he had saw Floyd bury Michael's body in a cemetery. Others would report that Floyd stated that Michael was still alive and safe. So Floyd, however, would not disclose any information about the boy on his whereabouts or who was taking care of him. Although in an interview done in 2015 by the FBI, he would admit to killing Michael the same day that he had kidnapped him and shot him in the back of the head twice. It stated that Michael was out of control like a typical six-year-old acts and that's what pushed Floyd over the edge so he lost his patience with the six-year-old and shot him twice in the head. Um, so they started investigating the death of Tana Hughes. When investigators started this um, investigation of Tanya Hughes and the kidnapping of Michael, they would uncover even more unsolved mysteries. One of these mysteries was that Tanya Hughes was actually raised by Franklin Floyd as his daughter since her early childhood. They, however, did a DNA test and Tanya was not Franklin's biological daughter. Franklin Floyd would give a number of statements that wasn't consistent with one another about how Tanya came to be in, into his custody. One story of his was that he had rescued Hughes after she had been abandoned by her biological parents, so he thought he was doing her a service or a favor. 
they went back as far as they could to establish any kind of records um, on Tanya Hughes and uncovered her elementary school registration in Oklahoma City in 1975. So Tanya was registered under the name of Suzanne Davis. Authorities now suspected Tanya had been born in the late 1960s and kidnapped by Franklin Floyd between 1973 and 1975. In October of 2014, it was found that Tanya Hughes had been identified as Suzanne Marie Savakis, who was the oldest daughter of Sandy Chapman, that disappeared with Floyd, who was her stepfather back in 1975. DNA was done and it would in fact match Chipman and Hughes. So that Chipman was her mother, it was Suzanne. So Chipman would attempt to file kidnapping charges but was unbelievably told by local authorities that since Floyd was their stepfather, he had rights to take the children. Suzanne Savakis was under the name Sharon Marshall, had graduated from high school in Forest Park, Georgia in 1986. They moved around a lot also. Um, she was a very smart student and she earned a full scholarship to Georgia Institute of Technology to study aerospace engineering. Even though Suzanne was very intelligent, she did not go to college and ended up moving to Tampa, Florida with Franklin. In 1988 is when she would give birth to her son, Michael. She began working as an exotic dancer and married Floyd in 1989 in New Orleans. At this time, they had been using the aliases Clarence Marcus Hughes for Franklin Floyd and Tanya Don Tadlock for Suzanne Savakis. So in 1989, Cheryl Ann Camiso disappeared. Her disappearance would remain unsolved until her skeletal remains were found in 1995 by a landscaper in the area of Interstate 275 in Pinellas, Pinellas County, Florida, I might have said that wrong. An archeologist would determine that she had died for a, from a beating and two gunshots to the head. This is when Suzanne and Franklin would be persons of interest in the case of missing Cheryl Camiso after coworkers had witnessed the altercation between Floyd and Camiso. The altercation was allegedly over Floyd accusing Camiso of reporting Suzanne for falsifying her income, which resulted in Suzanne losing her government benefits. Um, this argument occurred outside of the club where both women worked as dancers. Um, another coworker had reported that Floyd had punched Camiso in the face. Shortly after Camiso disappeared, Franklin and Suzanne would then flee to Oklahoma after the trailer was burned to the ground and that was found to be an intentional arson. Hmm. March of 1995 in Kansas. In Kansas, a mechanic found a large envelope that had been stuffed between a truck bed and the top of the gas station of a truck that he had recently won at an auction. There he would find 97 photographs in this envelope that included photos of a woman who had been bound and severely beaten. Police would then trace this truck right back to Floyd, who stole the truck in Oklahoma in September of 1994, but abandoned it in Texas that next month. Investigators would then compare these found photos to Camiso, along with evidence that was found with her remains and the clothing in the picture, um, they were both, they were found to be very similar to the remains of Camiso. A medical examiner compared injuries that were seen in the photos to the cheekbone of the, of Camiso's skull, finding that they were consistent with one another. So items like furniture and other belongings in the pictures were also identified as belonging to Floyd. Floyd was then tried and convicted for Camiso's murder based off of photographic evidence and um, evidence that was found in the truck that was purchased at the auction. So then we start investigating, we'll start getting more into the investigation into Michael Hughes's kidnapping. Um, the Michael's kidnapping and his mother's kidnapping Suzanne is actually still ongoing. 
Um, there was more photos found in the truck that showed sexual abuse of Suzanne that had started very early into her childhood. The photos found of her were sexually explicit poses at many ages that is believed to have started at the age of four years old. In September of 2014, Floyd would admit to the murder of Michael and said he had disposed the child's body on Interstate 35. They searched the area but was unable to find anything. So police, now they believe that wild dogs or hogs may have eaten Michael's body because it had been years since uh, Michael had disappeared. And so Floyd is just now confessing to the murder in 2014. So in 2001, while Floyd was awaiting trial for Camiso's murder, Judge Nancy Lay ruled that Floyd was incompetent to stand trial and ordered for him to go under, to, uh, ordered for him to undergo further mental evaluation. However, Floyd would then fight against this assessment, stating that he was indeed competent to stand on trial. To me, it sounds like this guy has no remorse. Um, months later, the judge would reverse her previous ruling and would order Floyd to then stand trial. He was then convicted and sentenced to death. Um, special note, let's say here are some notes um, that I also took. There was a special agent, Scott Lobb. He began working on the cold case of Tawny Hughes in 2013. And quote it, he said, there were a lot of peculiar twists to this case, which obviously we seem to go back and forth with different names, different people, figuring out that somebody is once with somebody who was kidnapped. I mean, it, this, the whole incident was crazy and so sad. Um, they did believe Floyd finally confessed of Michael's murder because he ended up running out of excuses. He was making excuses that Michael was in another country and he was safe. He was other with other people and he was safe. Um, he just had all kinds of excuses and finally he just confessed to his murder. So Floyd is now 72 years old and he has some serious health issues. It is very likely that he will die from natural causes instead of execution since no date has yet been set for his execution for the murder of Camiso. And it hasn't been said. Uh, I'm sorry, that's just it, it, unbelievable to me. But the last thing is one thing Floyd will not talk about is the death of Tanya Hughes. He has not confessed to murdering her or being the person from the hit and run so those are just all um, accusations and they're just accusations at this point because he hasn't confessed anything. There is no statements from him stating that he harmed or killed Tanya Hughes. I am sure most people believe that he did um, because he was obviously very, he's a very vile man. Um, so that is the story on Franklin Delano Floyd. And we will see you again at the next podcast. And I hope you guys have a great night, a great day, wherever you are. And be safe. <laughs>